Hey everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to my channel, The Story Ain't Over. Today, I'm finally bringing you a bookshelf tour after the many requests that you guys have been sending me over the past few years. The last one of these I did was in August of 2019, which you can go check out. I'll leave a link down below. In that video, I go really in depth into my collection and like specific books and ones that I've had for a very long time. So I definitely think you should check that one out first before you watch this one, because I'm not going to go as in depth into the ones that I already discussed in that video. So my collection has definitely grown a lot since 2019. It is currently the end of 2021 when I'm filming this and this will probably go up in January of 2022. But yeah, my collection has grown a lot since then. You'll notice in that video, a lot of my books were like evenly nicely spread out on the shelves. But in this version, there's a lot of books that are stacked up on each other and double stacked and all of that just because I have way more books than I did two, three years ago. And it's just been hard to like find the space to pack everything in. I've also unhauled a lot of books that were on that video as well, which I think is pretty interesting. So there's quite a few books that you will see in that previous bookshelf tour that I no longer have on these bookshelves, my main four bookshelves. I've actually moved them either to my basement or to like another closet or something with the intention that I'm going to get rid of them. I'm probably going to sell them or donate them. So with that in mind, this isn't like all of the books that I own, but these are like the main ones that I like to keep on my shelves and that I will be picking up and like keeping as part of my collection. And I might eventually get rid of some of these if I decide I don't wanna keep them anymore. Again, like the previous bookshelf tour that I did, I am not going to be going through every single individual book and picking them out and telling you the name and author and all of that. I know a lot of people enjoy some of those bookshelf tours, but that would take me 80 bajillion years to make. And I honestly don't feel like I really find the value in it, but I will be going through every shelf on each of these bookcases and going through how I organize them and also pointing out specific books on that shelf that I want to talk about and have something to say about. I'm going to be focusing on some of the newer books in my collection that have been added since 2019 so that you're getting new information that I haven't really told you before. You should definitely, once again, check out the 2019 version before you check out this one. And I think that's all the things that I need to say up front. You'll also notice that there are just random little things on my shelves, little baubles and items that I have nowhere else to put, so they're on my shelves. So I'll talk about those as I come to them. So I hope you will enjoy this video and learn something about my books and the way I organize them and find some recommendations along the way. And I would love it if you let me know in the comments which book on my shelves is probably your favorite. Alrighty, so this is the full view of my bookshelves. I apologize if this audio is not that great. I'm using the built-in microphone right now because my Rode mic uh, was freaking my camera out when I tried to flip it the opposite direction. So regardless, that's information you don't really need to know, but here we are. So these are my bookshelves. This looks pretty similar to what you may remember from my 2019 bookshelf tour, still the same four shelves, still in a similar orientation. What you may have noticed in some of my previous videos is that when I did my room redecoration back in, I believe, July and slash August of 2021, I did not have this bookshelf over here. I was only using three, but recently I decided to put this one back in in December. Of 2021 because I just really like the corner. I miss the corner, so I wanted the corner. Originally, I didn't want to block my accent wall of green over there, but I decided to, you know, F it. So here we are. These are my four shelves. There is not much organization compared to the previous bookshelf tour. I feel like it's a lot more messy this time because there's a shit ton more books, as you can see. I feel like when I did that bookshelf tour, I had a lot less books and two of my shelves were actually new. So it was like in addition to what I had before and therefore I had more space, but now I am running out of space. You also notice some books on this bottom corner over here. These are books I'm trying to get rid of. They're ones I'm planning to donate. So ignore those. They're just there because I had nowhere else to put them. And from here, I will get into each individual bookcase and then shelf. But um, one thing you'll notice across the board, I've tried to put all the books that are like the same height in this top shelf because they just fit perfectly 
into that shelf. And then anything that's like super short goes over here. And then aside from that, everything on this shelf is mostly like my old childhood favorites or some classics or really short books. And then over here is mostly my YA contemporaries, some books for school over here. And then over on this shelf is mostly my fantasy, sci-fi, some of my favorite books ever, mostly YA, I would say, and some adult, some of my adult favorites over here. And then the top shelf, I will say, is like a mix of adult and young adult, but mostly young adult. And then on the shelf over here, we've got a bunch of young adult fantasy up here. We've got adult fantasy over here. And then we've got a mix of a bunch of stuff, but mostly like adult books over here, some romance and other genres. And then this bottom shelf down here, we've got my book of the month books, which there are a lot of. And if you want to get your first box for only $9.99, use the link in my description. It always helps me out. And there's a book of the month box down there as well. Oh, and also some of my mangas down there. I forgot to mention that. My mangas down there and also my shiny albums. You guys may not know this. Those of you who have been watching for a while know this, but... Shiny is my favorite K-pop group ever. I have loved them since I was 10 years old. So they've been with me for most of my life and yeah, my favorite K-pop group, if you were curious. All right, let's get into the individual shelves. Alrighty, so unlike the previous version of this bookshelf tour in 2019, I'm not gonna get as in depth and I'm not gonna pull out as many books as I did that time. I think I mentioned this in the intro, but I'll pull out any ones that I didn't really talk about in the last one. But up here, we've got my childhood favorites and then random. Game of Thrones books because they're just really tiny and mass markety, so they fit nicely as a stack there. You guys may recall Dragon Rider is the book that got me into reading, one of the first fantasy books I read and absolutely fell in love with. And aside from that, nothing much here. I really loved the Fire Star, Fire Eternal, Fire Within books by Crystal Lacey. I was really obsessed with Maximum Ride when I was younger, but that series went to total shit after the third book. And that's about all I have to say about that shelf. I haven't read the full Game of Thrones series. I've only read the first one, but I did love the show before they let it tank to the ground. Here we have a slightly different shelf from the last bookshelf tour. I decided to put a bunch of my classics on this shelf and a bunch of small books. I don't know. This is like a total mess of a shelf, but I don't really care anymore. So over here we have some graphic novels. So over here we have B. Schwab's Extraordinary, which is a graphic novel based off of the Vicious and Vengeful books. I haven't read this yet, but this is an Owl Crate exclusive edition. We also have Red Rising Sons of Ares. This is a prequel graphic novel to the Red Rising series. I haven't read this yet, but I needed to own it because I love that series. <laughs> We've also got the Schwab's middle grade books. We've got an extra copy of Legendborn that I got in a book box. Sorry, I keep hitting the stand every time I move. We've got some of my favorite tragedies that I read for a tragedy class in university. I've got my Shakespeare over here. I've also got another big copy of Shakespeare on another shelf. Some of my favorite plays. I've got my Neil Gaiman collection over here. I've only read An Ocean at the End of the Lane, which I absolutely love if anyone was curious. I have not read Good Omens yet, but I love the show. I also have my Jane Austen collection and also my copy of Wuthering Heights. I don't love that cover, but it's one of my favorite books. Also really, really love this edition of Pride and Prejudice. I think I mentioned this in the last one. Also really love this edition of Jane Eyre. And then behind those books, I've got my Lord of the Rings, which I've only read The Hobbit and the first Lord of the Rings. I've got some other like small fantasy books and like mass market paper bounds, some romance in there, To Kill a Mockingbird's in there, The First Maximum Ride is in there, I don't know why. I have some Charles Dickens, which I haven't read yet, but I really want to. Some other classics, 1984, which I also haven't read yet. I'm pretty sure that's a copy from my high school that I never gave back. Frankenstein's in there. And then I've got some Tennyson poems, which I love those copies because I got them from a used bookstore back in my hometown where I grew up. And yeah, I just love those copies. They're so gorgeous. And I feel scared to flip the pages because they're so fragile, but they're so pretty. Also, I apologize to anyone watching this and feeling like I'm talking way too quickly, but this is what I do. I talk quickly and if you don't like it, well, too bad. Or like put me on half speed. I don't really care. But um, yeah, this is just how I talk. And you will notice that if you watch any of my other videos. All right, this shelf is one of my favorites. It's my Rick Riordan universe shelf. It includes the Rick Riordan books that he's written, but also a bunch of the ones from the Rick Riordan Presents imprint, which 
features a bunch of middle grade books with magic and different cultures written by people from those cultures, which I think is just an awesome thing that he is doing. And I have loved the Percy Jackson series since I was a kid. It was one of my favorite series ever. So they're over there, the original Percy Jacksons. As you can see, they're very beat up. I think I showed these off in the previous bookshelf tour. But yeah, super beat up. I used to reread the fourth and fifth one the most. Got some candles here. Got my Heroes of Olympus series over here. We've got Race of the Sun. I've also got the first Magnus Chase. I have Tristan Strong, Punches a Hole in the Sky. I've got another copy of it here in the second and third book. This is the only book that's not Rick Riordan Presents, which is Amari and the Knight Brothers. It's a middle grade that I've heard really amazing things about. I think I got it in an owl crate box. And then I've got the Ara Shaw series, some of my faves with South Asian main character. Dragon Pearl, the new collection from the Rick Riordan Presents authors, The Curse Carnival. I've got the Trials of Apollo series. I've only read the first one, but I had to own the rest of them because I just needed to. And then I've also got the Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes and Greek Gods, those illustrated editions. They are gorgeous. Let me tell you, they have some beautiful illustrations. And yeah, I just needed to have them as like a collector's item. And then we've also got uh, my journal from 2021. I don't know why this is here, but it's just here. I've also got Daughter of the Deep, Rick Riordan's new standalone novel, which is based off of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea? I don't remember the number. And then we've also got Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales. This is by Soman Chainani, and this is actually the author of A School for Good and Evil, which is another middle grade series that's super popular. I used to recommend it a lot to kids when I was working as a bookseller, but I've never actually read it myself, but I've heard really great things. We've got more candles over here, and that's about it for this shelf. All right, next we have my Cassandra Clare shelf plus Divergent. I don't know why Divergent is there, but it's just there. That is my favorite of the Divergent series. I only like the first one. The second and third were utter trash, hence why I think I donated Allegiant after really excitedly getting it when it released, and now I just don't want it. But I really did enjoy Divergent, not gonna lie. All right, these are all my Cassandra Clare books. So we've got the Mortal Instruments series, we've got the Infernal Devices, we've got all the short story collections, and then we've got the Dark Artifices series, and then also the Last Hours. I also have an arc of Chain of Iron, which was the best moment in my life. I was finally cool enough to get an arc of one of Cassandra Clare's books. And that's what all I have to say about this shelf. I really love her books. I do love like the Mortal Instruments and Infernal Devices more than the newer ones, but yeah. All right, now we're on to one of my favorite shelves, which is a bunch of series from my childhood, sort of-ish. Uh, some of these are from high school, actually. So we've got the Aragon series, The Inheritance Cycle, which is one of my all-time favorite series ever. I know people have mixed feelings about it, but I grew up reading those books and loved them. I was so freaking excited when Brisinger came out and Inheritance came out and just sat there reading endlessly devouring like a thousand pages in like a couple days because I just needed to know. But yeah, I loved the characters in that series and would read a bajillion more pages of them and the world. So yeah, that that's where I'm at. I really hope Christopher Paolini comes back to the series one day so I can read more about them because yeah, I really, really love those characters. And then we've got the Lunar Chronicles, which I read in high school, which I really enjoyed. They are based off of fairy tales with different diverse main characters. And then we've got the Magisterium series by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare, which is actually pretty cool. It's a really interesting middle grade series and like examines the idea of what it means to be a hero and like a villain also. And I really enjoyed it, surprisingly enough. And then we've got the Eon and Iona duology here by Alison Goodman. I remember enjoying them but I don't really remember much else beyond that. It's based off of Chinese mythology, though it's written by a white woman, so I take this with a grain of salt, but yeah. Then we've got the Hunger Games series, which is one of my all-time favorites, but I've also got the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which I actually haven't read yet because I heard so many bad reviews about it, and honestly, I didn't really want to relive the trauma of those books because they are traumatizing, I think. Uh, so yeah, I just never got around to reading it. I may one day pick it up, but not really in the mood to do so right now. Alrighty, and then because my tripod doesn't go lower than this, this is the bottom shelf with my manga. So we've got my book of the month box. I don't know why that's here. I bought a bunch of albums recently and haven't unwrapped them, but this is IU's new album, Lilac. We've got an old album 
from EXO. I think their first one. I really, really love this one, actually, not gonna lie. We've got Tokyo Ghoul down there. We've got Princess Jellyfish, uh, the novelization of Your Name, which I tried to read, couldn't really get into it, but I love the movie. We've got I Hear Your Voice, I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which I never ended up finishing. I've got a bunch of volumes of Hori Mia before I decided to stop buying them. I did really like that series, but I didn't really feel like reading more. We've got Black Clover, which one of you actually recommended to me, and I really enjoyed reading it. I just, like, never got around to continuing with it. I do want to continue with it one day. We've got A Silent Voice, which I also started and never finished, which is a running theme for me when it comes to manga. And then we've got All Har Ride, another one I started, did not finish, but really enjoyed the first few volumes. We've got my all-time favorite manga, one of my all-time favorite mangas, which is Orange. I love the entire thing. I like that it is a complete series, and it was just so well done, and I just loved it so much. I love the characters, and I love the message of it. I've also got Ancient Magus Bride, which is one that I started but did not really like. I've also got Dreaming Sun, another really cute shoujo manga that I really enjoyed, but again, I didn't want to keep buying expensive volumes of it. I did used to read a bunch of manga online legally so i was trying to be a little bit more legal but it's expensive and then we've got more on the right here my naruto and full metal alchemist bind ups and also my your name volumes i actually did read the your name manga and it's really nice it's basically the same thing as a movie i absolutely loved naruto and full metal alchemist growing up they were my two favorite favorite mangas growing up naruto i read from like the age of i think 12 until it finished and i was keeping up with like chapters every week and always getting excited so it's a series that I keep very close to my heart and I will always root for Naruto because I love him as a character. I also really love Fullmetal Alchemist as I said. I love the manga but I also really love the anime. I have watched both the original and also Brotherhood. Obviously Brotherhood is better but I do really love both and I should actually say at this point I've never actually seen the anime for Naruto. I've seen episodes here and there but I've never actually watched the entire thing through because I didn't really want to. I just love the manga as it is and I feel like it goes a little bit quicker and doesn't have all the fillers. So yeah. And then the last thing is My Brother's Husband, which is a manga that I actually really, really enjoyed. It's two volumes long, I think. I think that's all there is. It's about this man from, I think, Australia whose husband dies. And so he goes to Japan to meet his husband's brother. And the husband's brother also has like a daughter, I think. And he's no longer with his wife is what I think the story is. And yeah, he's just getting to know his husband's brother, but it's like told from the perspective of the husband's brother. So yeah, it's quite interesting and like taps into the homophobia in Japan and I really, really enjoyed it. And then over here, we obviously have a bunch of my albums. These are a bunch of shiny albums. We've got Taman's Moving album, which I recently bought because I didn't have before. We've got Shiny's Sherlock album. We've got their first album. We've got their one and one album. We've got their first concert CD. I've got all of Don Hin's albums as well. Joa. This is story number one. I've got bass in the lovely wine edition. Gorgeous. Also got Onya's album Voice. Key's album Face. I've got John Hin's final album Before He Passed, which is Poet Artist. I've also got story number two. And this is the illustrated edition, I think, as opposed to the photographic version. And then I've also got John Hyun's uh, book or novel that he wrote, which is based off of some of his songs and like the characters, I would say, in the songs. And then I've got Shiny's Story of Light album. And then finally, I've got their Misconceptions album, which is full of three different albums, I would kind of say, or two, and then like the extra songs added to it, so Misconceptions of You and Misconceptions of Me. And those are all of my albums. And now I'm gonna put these back where they were. And I should say, as I'm putting these back, Shiny, as I said, is one of my favorite K-pop groups, and I really love all the members. Jonghyun was my favorite of the group, and yeah, I just hold their music very close to my heart, so hence why I own all of their albums, but I don't really own anyone else's albums because, yeah, no one compares to Shiny for me. Alrighty, we're on to bookcase number two. This is the bottom shelf. I'm starting from the bottom, going to the top. Started from the bottom, now we're here. So these are my books from school, a bunch of years of school being an English major. Yeah, I was an English and history major actually. But yeah, these are a bunch of the books that I bought for classes or some classics that I just owned anyways. There's not much to say here. Some of my biggest books are like this 
collection of Shakespeare and also this anthology on theory and criticism. I've also got just a shit ton of classics over there. Not much I have to say about these that I don't think I mentioned in the previous bookshop tour. Alrighty, here we've got like a hodgepodge of some thrillers, adult thrillers, and some like nonfiction, and then some like books on Hindu mythology and myths and legends and stuff, and some random books in Frontier. These are ones that I'm planning to read. They're just in a stack here because I have nowhere else to put them. But yeah, some Sally Rooney that I'm hoping to read sometime soon, A Little Life. Circe, A Deadly Education. I've also got this crown here that I got in a box or a PR mailing of Beasts and Beauty, which I showed you on the middle grade shelf. Behind that, as I said, I just have a bunch of like Hindu mythology books and stuff. I've got nonfiction, I've got sci-fi, I've got some random thrillers as well, I've got some poetry books and like memoirs and stuff. I don't have much to say about anything on this shelf, it's just a hodgepodge of stuff that had nowhere else to go. Okay, this shelf is a bunch of contemporaries. This is where the YA contemporaries start. I have a bunch of Woodwick candles here that I have nowhere else to put. They're all almost done, I just don't want to throw out the jars yet but I love these two scents fireside and then also pumpkin butter and every now and then you will see like an Illumicrate mug here from the different boxes that I've unboxed over the years but yeah again a bunch of YA contemporaries some fantasies ish and sci-fi but yeah this is just like a general sort of mix none of these are really favorites of mine which is why they are this low on the shelf I usually Put books I don't like as much lower. Yeah, and that's what I got for this. All right, this next one also has a bunch of YA contemporaries. This is where my favorites sort of start. Also got this nice hat box of roses from uh, Rose Forever in New York. So we've got uh, my Cynthia Menon books. We've got just a bunch of other contemporaries that I love, particularly Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. They both die at the end. Slay is also fantastic. I also really love Love from A to Z by S.K. Ali. I haven't yet read Tell Me How You Really Feel or Saints and Misfits yet, but I really want to. I really love Rachel Cohn and David Levithan contemporaries that they write together. They are adorable. I don't know why 12 Days of Dash and Lily is over there. But yeah, obviously zero organization going on here. We've also got my Jasmine Core poetry books. They're really good. This one's actually a novel and this one's poetry, but I haven't read this one yet. Really love All Be The One by Lila Lee, fantastic contemporary by rep, plus size rep. She wants to be a K-pop star in the book. My Tara Mafi contemporaries that I absolutely love and adore to death. Love, love, love The Love and Lies of Roxana Lee by Sabina Khan, really great queer POC rep. The rest of these, these two are pretty good as well. These four I have not read yet. I've got Christine's books. Again, with Better, I actually really enjoyed. It was a really nice pick-me-up. I have not read Better Together, though, yet. It was sent to me by the publisher. All right, we've got more contemporaries here, more favorites. Absolutely love my collection of Tiffany D. Jackson thrillers and also her new horror, White Smoke. Absolutely fantastic. Grown is also fantastic, but so are all of them. We've also got the three books by Elizabeth Acevedo. Really love all three of them. Eliza and Her Monsters, another favorite, really great, like, anxiety rep. Another favorite is Frankly in Love by David Yoon, one of my favorite books of, I think, 2020. Honey Issues Guide to Fake Dating, an adorable queer fake dating romance, YA romance. One of my favorite books of 2021, Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. I didn't love her other two books. I did enjoy Permanent Record more than Emergency Contact, but Yoke took the cake. We've also got my Angie Thomas. I haven't read Concrete Rose yet, but I plan to. Female of the Species is pretty cool as well. Some are only we know. K-pop romance. Parachutes is the most underrated Y contemporary ever. I absolutely love it and adore it to death. These two I have not read yet, but I'm planning to. Oh, and also if you're looking for a pick-me-up, Charming as a Verb, an adorable Y contemporary about just like going off to university and learning to grow up and that kind of thing. And then up here we've got just some series and other books that sort of fit here and a bunch I haven't read yet actually. We've got the Truly Devious series, absolutely love that, haven't read the fourth one, the new one yet. We've got the Charlotte Holmes series, absolutely adorable gender-bent Sherlock Holmes series. We've got my John Green books here, absolutely love them. Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, one of the best books of all time. Parks of Being a Wallflower, also a really big favorite of mine. And then I basically have not read anything from like here 
to the right. Alrighty, here is a bunch of like YA fantasies and then also like Victoria Schwab's Darker Shade of Magic series which just magically fit there so I stuck it there with her YA series, The Savage Song, which I absolutely love to death. We've got the My Lady Jane books, those ones are a lot of fun. I really love the Winner's Curse series, I thought it was really well done and really interesting. Stranger Dreamer, one of my favorite YA fantasies ever, like all time best YA fantasies ever. If you are looking for a YA fantasy, read those because they're fantastic. And then we get to my favorite shelf, my all-time freaking favorites, and sort of like authors' books just grouped together. We've also got my Yu-Gi-Oh cards here. Let me know if any of you would want me to like flip through all the ones that I have because they're pretty cool. Okay, so here we've got my Poppy War trilogy. Absolutely love these books. My favorite adult fantasies ever. We've got the Shadow and Bone a trilogy. These are the new covers. I also own the old covers, but my sister is borrowing them. I've also got Six of Crows duology in paperback and also hardcover and then also a special edition of Six of Crows. We've also got a special edition of Shadow and Bone as well. This one's actually really gorgeous if you've never seen it before. Also got King of Scars. I have two copies because I needed the exclusive edition from I think Indigo. And then we've got my Ember in the Ashes quartet over here. Love these to death. And then we've also got a bunch of albums here and these are new ones so Tainment's Never Gonna Dance Again, and then Shiny's new Atlantis album. I got both versions because I had to have them. So here we are. Oh, and I also almost missed Key's new album, Bad Love. All right, this next one is another favorites shelf, but as you can see, I just like drop a bunch of random books on top here whenever I don't have somewhere to put them. Rule of Wolves should actually be up there with the other Lee Bardugo books, but here we are. We've got my Roshni Takshi books, which I absolutely love, an extra copy of the Gilded Wolves for some reason. We've got Mexican Gothic and Velvet Was the Night, Sylvia Morano Garcia, who I absolutely love. This shelf is also reserved for like books that are similarly this height because they don't fit anywhere else. We've got Cal Penn's You Can't Be Serious, If We Were Villains by ML Rio, great thriller, great memoir. Hank Green's Absolutely Remarkable Thing, love this duology. Anna K duology by Jenny Lee, another one I absolutely love. Got These Violent Delights and also a special edition from I believe Owlcrate. I've got the Sky Hunter duology, the second one isn't here, it's actually stacked down below because it's on my TBR for this month. Got a little candle that I got in a PR box and then Legendborn, two different editions because one is from I believe Owlcrate or Fairy Loot. And then Ace of Spades and The Midnight Lie by Marie Rukowski who wrote the Winners trilogy, which I haven't read yet. I haven't read this one yet. We've also got Jasmine Throne, which I really want to read soon, but would generally be on my adult fantasy shelf, but for some reason it's here. All right, this next shelf is basically the shelf where I dump a bunch of books that I'm currently reading and leave them on the edge here. It's usually where I like put a stack of my TBR for the month and so it just sits there. But yeah, these are just a bunch of books that I'm hoping to read soon-ish, so that's why they're there. It's a big mix here. I recently got this arc of Kakei by Vaishnavi Patel, which I'm really excited for. It tells the story of a vilified queen from the uh, Indian epic Ramayana. And aside from that, I feel like I've talked about a bunch of these books recently in other videos, so I'm not going to touch upon them too much. As for the organization behind those, I've just got a bunch of like YA fantasies over here. Some of these I've read, some of these I haven't, and also some like sci-fis as well. And beyond that, I don't have much to say. I really, really love the Graceling series. I have not read the newest one that came out, Winter Keep, after many, many years. I have my Holly Black here, which I really love. I actually really love Coldest Girl on Cold Town, if you've ever read that. It's quite cool. Okay, this next one is more of like a sci-fi shelf, I would say. It's also got another Illumicrate mug there, but yeah, mostly sci-fi, some fantasy. We've got my Marie Lu book, so Warcross, Legend series, also her standalone novel, Kingdom of Back, which I have three <laughs> different copies of. One is one I bought, one is one I got from a book box, and then one is an arc that I received early. We've got one of my all-time favorite books, House Moving Castle, there. We have a random Neil Gaiman book, which is Stardust. It just looks really pretty there next to the Kingdom of Back books, so I just left it there. We've got one of my all-time favorite YA sci-fi series, which is the Side Trilogy. It's actually out of order here, the Toll is the third one, but yeah. And we've also got another one of my favorite YA fantasy series, which is the Tiger at Midnight series by Swati Tirdala. It's actually quite cool inspired by ancient India and some Hindu mythology. Down here I've just got some random YA books, mostly fantasy I would say. I've got the Diviner series, which I've only read the first one of. I've got the Ace of Spades series, which I received from the publisher I think, all three, 
but I haven't read them yet. Some of these are from book boxes as well. I've got three copies of Lore that I got in book boxes. I think two of them from book boxes, one was sent to me by the publisher and I did not enjoy that book, so they're all down here. And then I've also got the Girls of Paper and Fire series. I've only read the first one, but I really want to continue with the series. And I know there's a third one coming out soon. All right, we're almost at the end. This is the home stretch. So this is the bottom shelf of my last bookcase. So this is where I put all of my book of the month books because there are so many. I've just stacked them here. And they're all the same height because that's how book of the month does it. So it just fits like perfectly in there. And then I've got like a couple arcs over here. I don't have anything in particular to say about most of these because I haven't read them yet or I'm planning to read them or whatever, but a lot of these are actually outside of like my comfort zone. So I'm interested to try a bunch of them out because I don't think I would have picked them up if not for Book of the Month. All right, next we have just another hodgepodge shelf, I would say. Some YA, some special editions. The Saga graphic novel collection is there as well. And also a Sailor Moon graphic novel uh, collection, which I absolutely love both of those. And I've also got like some literary fiction, fantasy, Toni Morrison and other stuff going on here. And also my little octopus guy. He's so adorable. Alrighty, this one is a fun shelf because it's full of a bunch of adult books that I actually really love and some that I haven't actually read yet. We've also got my The Story Ain't Over sign over here, another candle, another tea tin. So we've got some Silvia Moreno Garcia up here. We've also got a bunch of romances. Emily Henry, Talia Hibbert, absolutely love. I read Honey Girl, it's also great. I haven't read the bottom three down here. Over here is just like a bunch of books I'm hoping to read. I really enjoyed Ready Player One. This is a sci-fi and analyze here. Really found this memoir by Yonmi Park very insightful. Got Next Year in Havana, which I really love. And The Henna Artist, also one I really love. Some Taylor Jenkins Read. The Song of Achilles as well. Love Hypothesis. So yeah, there's like a hodgepodge of like general fiction, but also romance on this shelf, but mostly adult stuff. And also just a bunch of new favorites that I've discovered in the past year or so since I think 2019, because I feel like I've been reading a lot more adult in the past. Alrighty, this next shelf is a fun one because it is full of adult fantasy and a little bit of sci-fi. So the first four books over here are actually some reading color book club picks. I just have them stacked here, so I never forget that they are coming soon. I've got The Unbroken, which was the December 2021 Reading Color Book Club pick. Didn't really love it, but it was cool. I have Jade City and Jade War by Fonda Lee, which are part of the Green Bone series, which I've been hoping to read for ages now because I know so many people love it. We've also got just a bunch of other fantasies here. I haven't read Christopher Paolini's new sci-fi. I really want to. I will get to it one day. I've also got From Blood and Ash, which I actually need to get rid of, but this is like a special edition that I got in a book box but I didn't really want it because I beat enough the hell out of that book. But yeah, I would say a lot of these I haven't actually read yet, so I'm hoping to. The one series that I have read is the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown over here, though I have not read Dark Age yet. And then we've got my Forever Rose over here. Once again, I apologize for going through these so quickly, but I feel like I just don't have that much to say about all the books without like making this video 100 years long. So I'm just trying to get through it quickly. You can probably hear more of my thoughts on individual books and things in my other videos. This is just to show you the layout of my bookshelves, I would say. But here on this shelf, we have a bunch of YA fantasies. I've got a, another Illumicrate cup with tea in it this time. And then I've got some new fantasies. A bunch of these are from book boxes that I've received in the past. I don't usually seek out YA fantasies anymore because I just don't enjoy them as much anymore, though there have been exceptions. But I will say a lot of these I haven't actually read yet. I've read the first of Serpent and Dove. I've read the first of Cars War. I've read the first of the Winter Song duology. I have read the first one of The Young Elites. I've read the first one of Daughter and Smoke and Bone. And I think that's everything that I've read on the shelf. Oh, I also read the first one of Want. And I know a lot of people love Ray Bear. I really want to read that one soon. And also Jade Fire Gold. And then the final shelf on this bookshelf tour. This is more YA fantasies. I started The Gilded Ones, wasn't really enjoying it. I ended up sort of DNFing it. I tried to get into Wicked Fox, couldn't really get into it. I really enjoyed Sisters of the Snake. It is a fun YA fantasy inspired by Hindu mythology and like a South Asian setting, which was really cool. I have read Bone Crier's Moon. That was actually a pretty fun one. I haven't read the second one yet, but I do own two editions of the first one because they were in two different book boxes. 
Aside from that, I don't think I've read anything else on this shelf except for House of Salt and Sorrows. That one's actually a pretty cool one. It is sort of like a fairy tale, but it's quite spooky and a bit of a retelling of 12 Dancing Princesses. Yeah, not much to say about this one either. I just feel like there's so many books on some of these shelves that I just haven't read yet that makes it hard to say anything about them. But I do hope to get through more of these books, though I will say many of these like YA fantasies I might just end up unhauling at some point because I just don't think I will get to a lot of them. And with that said, that's sort of the end of the bookshelf tour. You will get another end clip from a earlier version of me, but this is me when I was filming the actual clips of the shelves. I just want to say if you felt like this was really fast, I apologize, but I just don't have that much to say about each shelf since I feel like I've talked about a lot of those books in the previous version of this bookshelf tour in 2019 and the new ones I feel like I tried to pick out a little bit more but I feel like the overall organization of my bookshelves hasn't changed that much and is always usually fluctuating based on what I'm actually reading at the time. But regardless I hope you enjoyed this and I will take you back to Jenny of the past. Alrighty so those were my bookshelves. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so so much for watching. I definitely have a lot of books but they all mean a lot to me. My book collection is one of my prized possessions and things that I really love and I would never go anywhere without them, you know, never leave them behind. But as I said at the beginning of this video, I'd love to hear from you guys which book on my shelves is your favorite. Are there any books that you didn't expect to see on my shelves? I would also love to hear that. And overall, I hope you guys got some great recommendations to pick up yourself. Thank you so, so much for watching. Check out my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and TikTok in the description down below if you want to get more content from me and I'll see you in my next video. So please remember that this story ain't over. Bye!